Grace and Peace family. Here we are for a fireside chat. The thing we're going to talk about today is the calculation of the ancient times and how this time was different than our time today. We're going to walk back in time and we're going to talk about what it was like during the time of Messiah and then also up to about 300 approximately 300 AD. And this talk that we're going to have is going to take a Berean attitude where all things are considered and brought back to study in the scriptures to prove out a matter. Many of us in the world today, the reason I say us is that it, it I believe that it's all of us. We have our ideals We have our facts that we have acquired. We have our understandings. Some of us have a very strict religious process. And these are all hurdles to the Berean process. Typically, if it doesn't fit our dogma, then we cast stones at it, or worse. And we never even take it into consideration, regardless of whether we're hearing it from a brother in Christ or we're hearing it from somebody on the street. If it doesn't fit what we believe, then we immediately cast it aside. And in most cases, we will attack those that have an ideal that isn't exactly as ours is. And we can see that today with thousands of denominations of Christianity. And what, how did we get here? What has this process become that would divide us to the point where there's I believe there's close to 3,000 different denominations of, of Christianity. And, and where, where did this, this religion of Christianity start? Many will, will even take offense to that, that, that I call Christianity a religion. But remember, For the first 70 years after our Messiah was crucified, there were no Christians. Let me say that again. For the first 70 years after 
the death of Messiah, there were no Christians. You see, that term was brought about approximately in the 70s. And what I mean 70s, it would be 70 AD after the destruction of the temple, when there was the dispersion of the believers. And they were going into all of the different lands, especially the Greco-Roman area. And then we see that this term arose. And I pray that you would take this to study. I believe everything that I'm going to present today is provable with Berean study. So this term Christian was actually a term given by others that were outside of the fold. Uh, the believers did not call each other Christians. This was a term that was given by the others that were not followers of the way. And it was a way of putting somebody down for their beliefs. It was a, a curse on them. A, a word that was a way to put somebody down. It wasn't, like I said, it wasn't a term that the believers gave each other. So that's the first thing that we're going into today in this study is how was it at the time of Messiah? And if you do your research, you'll see that there were three sects of Judaism in and around the Israel proper and the lower state of Israel, or what we can call Judah, and the city of Jerusalem. This area, including northern Egypt, would have been considered a place where these three different sects of Judaism were prevalent. And two of them, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, everybody knows a lot about. But there is one sect that has been essentially erased from our history books and not really talked about in most Christian circles. And there's a reason for that. We're going to get into that in this series. We're going to be discussing the original followers of Christ and how it was back then because we've become disconnected from the ancient times in many different ways. And we're going to break those all down and discuss what it means to follow the way. The original three sects of the Pharisees and the Sadducees 
and the Essians is easy to prove out in history, for there are many documents that have been written about these three orders and many ways to track back Messiah and John the Baptist to the Essian order. Mary, Christ's mother, was living in a Nazarene encampment before the time of Messiah. And you can do your homework. There was no Nazareth during the time of Messiah, but there was the Nazarenes that were in that area. And these Essians were multiple different factions. If you were in Northern Egypt, they would call you a Therapeuti. If you were in Israel proper, then traditionally they would be called the Nazarenes. And the Nazarenes and the Therapeuti were sects of the Essians. And you had these different sects that essentially were vying for delivering the truth to the people. And we're not going to get into the pharisaical or Sadducee orders. And we're just going to briefly touch on the actual order of the Essians. What we're going to get into is the transfer of history today down to us and how these things became fractionated. And then we're going to take multiple studies and we're going to break down each of these different ways that history was hidden from us and how this great Christian religion was built upon a Roman understanding and from a Roman perspective and how this wasn't the case in the beginning and up till about 70 AD that what we have today is radically different than the way it was back then. And these individual studies that you may be able to do on your own will help to prove out for yourself what I'm speaking about. Because this is going to take Berean study. You're not going to hear this from your pastor or your church or people that are in your church in most cases they won't even have any information on this it's a very small percentage of followers of Christ that even have heard this information and so it's easy to pass it off and judge it as false but I assure you, I've done my homework. And these things that we're, we're after.
after for the kingdom are all measures of truth. Without truth, nothing stands. So we're going to tear down some walls. And we're going to build a new temple. A temple without corruption. A temple that's been purified by truth. Okay, here we go. The Essian Order was a communal order that was set up in opposition to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And this order was a priestly order. And there is much research into John the Baptist's father being a priest, but we do not see John the Baptist participating in any of the traditional priestly manners. He was essentially considered a wild man out in the desert. And the reason that we have this portrayal of him this way is because we do not understand his order. And some will call this the Melchizedek order. And this would be rightly so. As these priests are from a different order, and it doesn't necessarily mean that they're from a diff different genetic line. <clears throat> but it can be that they have chosen to follow a different way. And during the time of Messiah, these Nazarenes and these Therapeuti, they called themselves the followers of the way. And if you had taken your Nazarene vows, then you were a Nazarene. And as I said, if you were in northern Egypt, you would be called a Therapeuti. And this is why the story during the birth of Christ of Joseph and Mary going to northern Egypt if you do your research out, you'll realize that there was a encampment there of essentially the Nazarenes that were doing their work in Egypt. And this work that they had was as healers. And this is the reason that they were labeled as therapeutae. Or therapeutai. For their work was to heal. The others that were around them. And they were to go about healing others. And preparing natural. healing remedies and they were known as the healers and these are the people that you would take your loved ones to when they were ill when you could not find a traditional way within the cities you would go out to the desert to the Nazarenes or the Therapeuti to be healed. And this is where John the Baptist was in the desert, in the wilderness. And this order 
had very strict communal rules. They kept everything in common. And what I mean by that is no one had anything of their own. And this is very strange to us today because everything about our culture is about ownership. And the Essians had given up individual ownership and all things were held in common for the good of everyone in equality. We're not talking about communism. We're talking about communal equality. And if you had a lot of money, and you were rich, and you came into the order, then all things were given over to the family to manage. And everything that you owned was given over to the family to manage inequality. And this is why the rich man could not follow Christ because he understood what Christ was speaking to him when he said to go and sell everything that he owned or give away everything that he owned and to come and follow him. Christ was letting him know that all th everything that he owned was going to be given to the poor, the meek. And in our culture, this is not doable for most people. Our ideals have become about ownership of our things. Mine, this is mine, that's mine, these are mine. And, and I'll, I'll give, I'll give some, some of these things to this poor person or I'll, I'll give some of these things that are mine to that person or I'll donate some of my stuff to this organization. And this is where the problem with the heart lies. that we desire to have ownership over the temporal. And this is one of the things that kept most people from following Messiah back in the day. Is they wanted to hear the words They wanted to comp, uh, they wanted to be able to understand these things from a religious perspective. But they could not grasp the freedom that's, that Christ was speaking of because we are in bondage to the things that we own or the things that we consider ours. The more things that we stack up, the more bondage, the more chains that we're in. And when we can come into the order and relinquish the ideals of ownership and the things that are given to us by the Father we consider the Father's. And that they are to 
be shared in common with those around you. You gain a perspective that is incomparable to what we're being taught in our churches today because Christianity has become about using a religion to get more, a faith to get more. When the original foundation of this way was to give everything away. and to bear up your cross and follow Messiah. And these orders can be seen in their ideals by the actions of the men within the belief sets. We have many ways of proving out how the Pharisees were and how the Sadducees were. And we can see the stories of John the Baptist in the wilderness. We can read the stories of the Dead Sea Scrolls and the way that these men lived in this strict order. And the reason I say men is down in Qumran, it, I, they, they believe that it was all men in that area. It, it wasn't necessarily like that in all the encampments. But there were some that were zealots. And in order to keep purification of the priestly order, there was segregation of the sexes. And like I said, it wasn't like that with all, all of the Essian encampments. So the Essian order is where John the Baptist and Christ had their ministries. And this is why Christ said he was called to the lost tribes or the lost house of Israel. Is these northern tribes had been dispersed and the original apostles and disciples were sent out to find these people and bring them into the way. And so this order of Essians can be broken down into the Nazarenes and the Therapeutae or Therapeutae And this order was a communal order of healers. And they were trained in essentially what we would call today naturalopathy. They used herbs and natural medicines to heal all their ailments. And they taught a way of living naturally. And I have been studying this way for over 20 years. When I first started doing my research into the Dead Sea Scrolls, the ancient sect of the Essians the ancient lost history of Joseph in Israel I mean in 
Egypt, excuse me. And all of these things led me to a very deep understanding of a lost and hidden history. And the reason that this history was hidden was because of what happened from 70 A.D. to 300 A.D. And we see that there was the death of the majority of these people who became followers of Christ during what we call the foundation of Christianity. And it was this Roman form of Christianity that came against these Essenes. And the majority of the sects had to go into hiding They were running from the Christians, the Roman order of Christianity had taken over and was marching on all things that did not align with their Nicene Creed. And you can look up the Council of Nicaea and there are many other councils that were put together by Constantine and the Roman factions that had taken over the faith of Christ. You see, they did not adapt the beliefs of the Essians. They hunted the Essians and the Therapeutae down and threw them into the lion's dens and hung them on crosses and stakes 